the systems and structures we live in are also primes. Right? So, and, and uh, Dr. Kenna Clark basically said this, right? When he talked about if you live in an area where, an area that's disrespected, where there are rats, rats and roaches, where there's trash is not picked up, it's not that just rats and roaches, it's also priming you that you're not valuable. You're sending a message to those children that, that, that we don't care about them, and they internalize that message. Um, so, and then it reinforces the structures. So the structures and the unconscious are interactive. And they're interactive through not a single causation, but through multiple causations. So it's going back and forth. We used to think about, is it A or is it B? It's A and B, and it's A and B in relationship to each other. Okay. Okay. So Lori, and Lori is, is that, that thing in your ear? <laughs> That's Lori for me. <laughs> so just a couple of things before I go to the systems and opportunity mapping, and I will do that. First of all, we're all situated differently within structures. Um, and so when I talk about the social determinants of race, it's really saying, how are we situated within structures of opportunity? Uh, so for example, when I go out to working class white communities, I don't talk about white privilege. I'm a college professor. I have tenure. I have a chair. I have a six-figure salary. I have health insurance. I am, you know, I'm an African-American man. I still get stopped by the police. But within the structure, I am situated pretty well in relationship to them. Uh, so it's not that, yeah, blacks and whites and Latinos are situated differently, but Oprah Winfrey is not situated the same way as, you know, uh, a, a white person who's unemployed. So what we try to do is look at multiple dimensions, not a single dimension, and through that we actually map out opportunity and think about how groups are situated. So one of the exercises, if we have time, I want you to think about how your groups are situated within structures of opportunity. And that is largely what race is. It's the fact that we're situated differently in relationship to opportunity and social structures and society. And yet we don't take the time to think about what those opportunity structures are uh, and what our situatedness is. Another way I talk about this is uh, there's an escalator, right? And the escalator is taking us up to the third floor. If we just stand on the escalator, and some of us are knuckleheads, so we'll play and we'll fall off the escalators, but most of us on the escalator will get to the third floor if we don't do anything. Next to that escalator, there's an escalator that's instead of going up, is going down. And to get to the, to get to the third floor on that escalator, you got to work your butt off. You can still do it, but it takes a lot more time and energy. And so if you're in a low opportunity structure, in order for you to succeed, you got to work your butt off. It doesn't mean you won't succeed, but most people will not get to the top floor. Most of us are not Barack Obama, and most white folks are not Barack Obama. Uh, so they get to Harvard not because they're Barack Obama, but because they're standing on an escalator where their parents went to Harvard uh, and have the money to pay for it. And so again, to sort of think of where are we, where is our opportunity structure? Uh, one last thing that I will move on is that we tend to think of things in terms of individual. So we don't notice that we isolate people by groups. We associate people in terms of opportunity by groups. And so when the Latino doesn't graduate from high school or the black kid does poorly on a standardized test, instead of looking at the structure, whether they're on an up or down escalator, we look at the child. Instead of fixing the system, we want to fix the child. Lonnie Grunier and Gerald Torres, they write about the minor in, in the canary, and the minor in the canary tells you the condition of the air and the environment. Because we are so individualistic, instead of fixing the air, we want to fix the canary. Uh, and it's telling us that there's something wrong with the air. And so one of the things that a structural approach does is say, What's wrong with the structure, not what's just wrong with the individual? So we just had the, the largest financial meltdown since 
the Depression. And a lot of it was built on subprime loans, bad loans being driven to the black and Latino community. Uh, and the first response of society was, what's wrong with the black and Latino borrower? Not what's wrong with our financial system. And it was only when investors started losing money that we said, okay, maybe there's something wrong with the system. Our first response was, we need to teach blacks and Latino financial literacy. No one said, for the people who brought those loans from Goldman Sachs, we need to teach the investors financial literacy. Instead, we said, Goldman Sachs is a crook. <laughs> Part of that is that we're inclined to think that the blacks and Latinos are failing because they are failures. But when we, when we see sophisticated white people fail, we're inclined to say, there must be something wrong with this system.